Yeah, so um, today I'm going to talk about how simulator uh, follows dust evolution in their simulations. So uh, we already heard several talks talking about the importance of the interstellar dust. Um, dust uh, is a, um, providing a very important um, heating mechanism in the, in the ISM. It's a so-called uh, photoelectric heating by interacting with uh, stellar uh, 5 UV radiation. Um, which is uh, actually the, the most important heat source in uh, most typical spiral galaxies. And also, um, we know that dust provides an ideal place for uh, the formation of molecular hydrogen, um, which is important not only, not only in the ISM, but also, uh, presumably also, uh, potentially also in the uh, galaxy outflow as well, because people have been proposing that uh, these molecular outflows might be formed in situ in galaxy winds. And I also know that uh, does modify the uh, spectrum of galaxies by reprocessing uh, UV light into infrared. Right, however, um, <coughs> until very recently, the treatment of dust in simulation, in hydrodynamic simulations for galaxy formation have been very simplified. So the most common way is to simply assume that uh, that, for example, like 40% of your metals is actually in dust form. So that's how people estimate how much dust you have, um, which is a zero order approximation. This may or may not uh, be okay, but this is the simplest uh, thing you can do without following the uh, evolution of dust. Uh, but if you look at the observation, uh, you actually realize that the, the dust to gas ratio uh, actually varies um, not only uh, in, from galaxy to galaxy, but also within a galaxy. For example, these are observations of the LCM SMC. You can see that dust to gas ratio actually um, scale uh, uh, changes as you go to higher surface density. So it goes to denser area, you have more uh, dust, uh, more uh, metals that is in the dust form. Can be up to a factor of seven in, in, in the case of SMC. So uh, recently, uh, the efforts of, of really trying to follow how dust evolved and formed in uh, galaxy simulations, he's an example of the cosmological simulations. Um, you can see here, that you can see the total mass here, and then uh, in the lower panel, this is the dust surface density. You can see, for first of all, they actually trace uh, the, the total mass, but then you, if you look at the dust to metal ratio, you actually realize immediately that this is not really a constant which is uh, what people have been assumed in, in uh, the simulation for decades. And in this, uh, the, this sim simple model uh, adopted in these simulations, uh, they track the destruction, they, they track several um, processes. The first is the destruction in the supernova shocks that are thus being sputtered uh, by the, uh, between a collision between gas and dust. And then the, the uh, dust material is returned back to the gas phase. This is a destruction process, and the second process is, uh, as follow is the uh, is the uh, stellar ejecta. So you you have AGB uh, AGB stars and the uh, supernova. At the end of their lifetime, they eject the uh, dust. The, the dust can be condensed uh, in the stellar ejecta. This is uh, a, a potentially a very important source of um, interstellar dust. But we also know that there's another very important source of uh, dust, which is the accretion in the, in the dense ISM, which is that you can have, uh, once you have some seed of dust, the, the, um, the dust can grow in the ISM just from the uh, in, uh, collision between gas and dust. So these three are the processes they uh, uh, assume, and they uh, simply assume that you only have a single grain size, and um, you, you, can, you can vary the grain size and see how your results are sensitive or not, are not sensitive uh, to your assumption of your grain size. And here's another example that uh, do things slightly more complicated um, in a sense that instead of assuming one uh, grain size distribution, they actually take two uh, different uh, sizes. So this is just a small dust and large dust with these two uh, values. And in these uh, hydro simulations, they uh, look, at, look into the uh, scaling relation between metals and dust which is basically just the uh, dust to metal ratios. 
Um, so you, we know that the dust to metal ratios is roughly a constant at high uh, metallicity, but uh, at low metallicity, this starts to break down. You can see the linear relation breaks down here uh, below around uh, 0.1 solar metallicities. Uh, and fo by following the, um, following the dust evolution, they can, uh, they can uh, reproduce their observational uh, trend that this break occurs roughly at 0.1 solar metallicity. And this has to do with the, the importance of the time scale for, for which the dust, uh, the, the accretion of dust in the ISM uh, becomes effective uh, at high uh, metallicity. You can uh, also predict the extinction curve uh, for model, for dust evolution models. Uh, but for this kind of prediction, you, you have to have some, um, you have to assume certain uh, dust uh, grain size distribution. Uh, so in this particular case, they track um, the, the, the evolution, not only just the uh, cre creation and destruction of the dust, the three processes uh, uh, in the previous model, but in this case, they also try to follow the processes that can shuffle um, the, the uh, grain size. For example, shattering means that uh, uh, large grains, uh, when you have collisions between uh, dust grains, the large grains can fragment into smaller grains. And correlation is kind of the opposite process uh, where you have small grains uh, that stick together and become large grains. So these two processes are important uh, to include if you want to do, uh, if you want to study the evolution of grain size distribution in a cell consistent way. Uh, however, one of the limitations of uh, the model of simulation of this kind is that uh, because of the limited resolution of these large cosmological simulations, which typically uh, can only afford roughly like kiloparsec resolution, you really, really don't resolve the structure of the ISM, so you cannot really follow the dust physics. So <clears throat> the, the thing that uh, they end up doing is adopting just like uh, typical galaxy formation simulations, assume, uh, adopting some subgrid models that has certain parameters that you um, have, to, have to fine tune or calibrate uh, in order to kind of reproduce certain observations. And um, in this way, this is actually in a, a very similar spirit uh, to semi-analytic models, but the, the uh, simulation, the galaxy simulation is kind of in this awkward spot that you have this free parameter, but it's very, very expensive for you to actually uh, calibrate your, your parameter because they are too, too, too expensive to run many set, uh, different uh, models meant to, to explore the par parameter space. For example, that if, you, uh, if you have dust extraction in the simulations, what typically you do is like you have this free parameter uh, of the extraction time scale that you just uh, somehow motivated by uh, either uh, like analytic calculations. But these uh, parameters, with, whether this is uh, universal value, this is, th there's no good reason to, to believe that this is a universal value that can apply or which, which uh, particular uh, time scale can suit for uh, all different um, galaxy um, population. Uh, so we're trying, what we're trying to do here is try to uh, do an up initial uh, simulations that just focus on a, a very small patch of galaxy um, instead of doing like a, a full-blown cosmological simulations. In this case, we can really uh, resolve uh, the structure of the ISM such that we can follow this uh, from first principles. So in this particular uh, paper, we try to uh, follow, what we try to follow is how dust is destroyed in supernova shocks. Um, the physical uh, mechanism is called sputtering, um, just collision between gas and dust. And um, <clears throat> uh, we use this one fluid approach such that the dust is uh, treated as a passive scalar that's just affected uh, with the gas. And the, uh, the, the argument for that is that in, in the ISM, you have magnetic fields and uh, dust grains are typically charged. And their uh, llama radius, their gyro radius, it, typ it typically is uh, sub, sub uh scales, which is uh, smaller than the, uh, than, than the scale we are considering. Uh, it's smaller than the resolution where we are doing the simulations. So this, this can be 
safely treated as passive scalars. And then uh, to actually track the um, sputtering, there are two different um, sputterings. One is just is called thermal sputtering. This is just the thermal motion of gas that collide with the dust. And, uh, the other one is called non-thermal sputtering here. It's just uh, when you have a, a bulk motion of gas that have a relative bulk motion with respect to the dust grains. This can also give rise to uh, sputtering, which is not uh, included, uh, which is not captured in, in the, just by the thermal motions. So we integrate the uh, e equation of motion of dust, uh, the relative velocity between dust and gas, which include the direct collision, the drag force include the direct collision between dust and gas, but also include the so-called tr plasma drag. It is when your, uh, when your gas is uh, partially ion or, or, or fully ionized, you will have this um, coolant uh, interaction between dust and gas. Uh, this actually a similar process to, to the uh, dynamical friction for, for gravity system. And also we uh, follow the beta tron acceleration where uh, you have a gas compression of gas, which because of the flux uh, freezing, uh, the magnetic field will, will be, will be um, enhanced. And in this case, the dust will be spin up very fast. And this will also uh, enhance the, the non-thermal sputtering. So while we, we apply this model into a single supernova uh, explosion in, in a uniform medium to see how uh, the dust will be destroyed in this case, uh, here I'm showing you uh, a, the dust uh, sputtering efficiency as a function of the uh, grain size. Uh, efficiency, a uh, high efficiency means that most of the dust is destroyed after the uh, supernova explosions. So you can see that for thermal sputtering, it's actually inverse proportional to grain size because the small, small grains, they have, they have more um, surface density per, um, per volume, uh, which, which um, promotes the collision uh, between gas and dust. Uh, so you can see this uh, inverse proportion uh, relation between, between the efficiency and, and grain size. However, in the non-thermal sputtering, it's actually quite flat you can see this flat curve, the, the blue curve here. And that's because that the drag force is also, has the exact same uh, dependency as the, um, as, the, as the sputtering, because drag force is, is, is all just collision between dust and gas. So this, um, the, the dependency on green size cancels out. And uh, here is this, uh, there's an integrated destruction uh, of single supernova um, in different environments. So this is in different ambient densities. Um, so we're looking at the, the total amount of dust that is destroyed by single supernova. You can see that um, if you go, uh, there's a maximum value in a, in a diffuse, uh, diffuse phase around 0.1. And if you go, if you, uh, go to uh, lower densities, then collision is not efficient, so uh, the destruction uh, goes down. But if you go to higher densities, even though you can see here that the efficiency uh, increases, keep increasing as you go to higher densities, the total amount of um, dust still goes down. And this is because um, at high densities, you also have more cooling, which give, means that your, uh, your supernova bubbles will, will, st will be stored uh, at a much uh, earlier time. So this competition gives uh, give you a, a, a sweet spot for dust destruction, which is ac actually a typical uh, environment for supernova explosions, at least in the Milky Way like galaxy. And here's an example where we uh, apply this method into a multi-phase ISM. Uh, I'm going to show a, a movie of, uh, the, of the simulation so upper panels, you can see this is a gas surface density and the vol uh, volumetric density slice and the temperature slice here. And on the bottom, you can see the dust property. This is the gas to dust ratio. And um, the inverse of it is the dust to gas ratio. And we separate it into common dust and silicate dust. And uh, you can see this explosion of supernova is, is dropped randomly. and um, <coughs> You can see most of the 
uh, ISM will the, the ISM will be shaped by this supernova explosion into these multi-phase structures. And you can see the destruction mostly happens whenever you have a hot bubbles that is correlated with the hot bubbles. Uh, this is where most of the sputtering uh, is happening. And already, without, without even including other processes, you can already see that the, the dust-to-gas um, dust -gas ratio has some spatial uh, variation just because of the, uh, of, the, um, of the supernova shocks destruction and because that the turbulent mixing is not instantaneous, so you always have some variation. And we predict the, we predict the destruction time scale for these two different dust uh, species that uh, can be used in large-scale cosmological simulations or semantic models. Okay, so uh, here's my summary. So uh, dust evolves, so we really, uh, not only in their abundances, but also the property can also evolve. So uh, we, uh, we just saw an example that the, the extinction curve will evolve uh, in different galaxies or in, in different stages. And um, uh, that has to do, uh, ha most, most likely has to do with how the green side distribution evolves um, as the galaxy uh, um, evolves. And also the composition might uh, change. So the composition being that wh what, what, is the, uh, what kind of dust species you actually trace. Are you tracing uh, carbon dust or silicate dust or what kind of um, material form you, you assume because that has to do, that will affect the, um, the spot, sputtering rate, for example, if you assume your carbon dust is in, for example, graphite. <coughs> and so uh, recently, dust evolution has started to, to be included in galaxy simulations. And in cosmological simulations, these are uh, most suitable to do a, like a statistic sample of a galaxy population and to study how uh, the dust uh, how dust will evolve across the entire Hubble time. Um, but the limitation is the uh, uncertainty for sub, uh, the uh, adopting subgrid models, where this the, subgrid, uh, the small scale simulations that I just described can really help to, to improve uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the subgrid model that is used for these large scale simulations. And also um, observational data of dust properties, both uh, in, just in the thermal emissions or uh, even in the extinction curves uh, for different galaxy populations uh, in different environments. For example, uh, there's something that at low metallicities, we know that dust properties changes, the, uh, the, the extinction properties changes, for example. And this can provide very uh, crucial constraint for models and we can compare the simulation to observations. So that's, that's it, thank you.